All right, let's wait for this to verify that it works, and then we're going to discuss my thoughts on this whole news that people keep sending me in messages on Apple offering its iPhone repair tools to third-party repair shops, why I'm not impressed, why I don't care. And it looks like we're on. All right, so we are here, so I can get started. Okay, so today we're going to be discussing this whole thing of Apple offering its tools to third-party shops. And I'm going to be going over why I don't care. You won't have to visit an Apple store to get a quick fix, it says. You can get your iPhone fixed at third-party shops, but it's clear they play second fiddle to Apple stores when they don't have access to Cupertino's specialized tools. However, yeah, however, it looks like Apple is leveling the playing field. The company is, let's see, where was I here? The company is running a pilot program that hands out its iPhone calibration machine to three authorized service providers. The tool verifies that the 3D touch and multi-touch in Newer iPhones, 6S and up, meets Apple's standards after repair, so you won't have to worry about an imperfect fix. It's relatively fast, too. The entire verification process takes 15 minutes. It's not clear which partners are involved outside of Computer Care, which operates in the Santa Clara area, a.k.a. Apple's backyard. Whether or not the program expands will likely depend on initial results, but it could prove incredibly helpful if it becomes widely available. You wouldn't have to go to an Apple store to know that your iPhone fix meets Apple's expectations, and Computer Care believes this will dramatically reduce repair times. And that's good even if you don't visit third-party service centers. The more repairs these outlets can handle, the less pressure there is on Apple stores to handle everything themselves. The move may not be entirely out of generosity, we'd add. Apple has been fighting right to repair bills. I eh, wonder if we know anything about that. And is facing accusations that it's hindering the abilities of users and mom-and-pop stores to go fix their devices. This appears to be an attempt to partly allay concerns. It's giving third parties the equipment they need to make sure their repairs are up to snuff. This won't necessarily change lawmakers' minds, but it certainly won't hurt. And then we go to the comment section, and if you ever read an article and are irritated, you will be three times as irritated when you get over to the comment section. So this person here uh, named Hoochie Mama knows what's up, and why the fuck is Chrome continuing to refresh? Is my F5 button stuck or something? Yeah, go figure. I go to do a video and something stops working. Sound familiar to anybody? Anyway, let's load the comments, and because that is going to make us mad. I have fixed enough iPhones to know this is bullshit. Any decent quality part will perform exactly the same as the original, and you can't tell the difference. This person says, I don't believe it. My iPad has never felt the same after having the screen replaced from a third party, which is what the Apple genius recommended. There's something off about how the glass feels. And then the comments continue onwards and onwards, and the guy's like, how am I supposed to know the quality of a part as an end consumer? The repair shop told me they were using good stuff. You didn't get a good repair, says Hoochie Mama. And the person says, well, I would never get a device by somebody who didn't have the special tool. And then they say, you had one exper experience with a third party. Don't start thinking they're all useless. And yes, as usual, somebody goes to the cheapest person on Craigslist, doesn't bother checking reviews, doesn't bother getting references from friends, and then wonders why their stuff doesn't work as well as it did coming out of the box. I would slap my head even harder if it wasn't filled with sunburn. I know, Clinton, it's bullshit. So let's just, talk, let's just go over the highlights of this particular article. So the first highlight that I would like to, to point out here, the tool verifies that 3D touch and multi-touch in newer phones, success and up, meets Apple standards. The entire verification process takes 15 minutes. Are you fucking kidding me? The verification process to ensure that the screen works takes 15 minutes with this tool? How many people here fix iPhones where they're willing to wait 15 minutes for the fucking repair? If I tell somebody that it takes more than 15 minutes from the time that they check in to the time that they have a working phone and have checked out, they lose their fucking minds. And you're telling me that this tool takes 15 minutes just to verify that the touchscreen works. You verify that the touchscreen works on a phone like this. Watch. Swipe, swipe, type a little bit. 
open up a drawing app and maybe like draw a fucking circle or something or draw a little kitty. That's it. That's how you verify that the touch works. This is insanity. Now, the second thing that I want to go over here is the difference between the press release that, that came out from computer care and the actual article. So if we look at the article here that's repeatedly reloading because Chrome is having a fucking seizure for some reason, you'll s God damn it. Hello. All right, let me just turn off volume since my computer is being a bit, actually, yes, good. All right, so if you look over here, it says, the tool verifies that 3D touch and multi-touch in newer iPhones 6S and up meets Apple standards after a repair. No mention is made of security. It talks about 3D touch and multi-touch. But then when we go over to the press release over here uh, about the pilot program, we already manage iPhone repairs at our facilities, but because of the device's specialized security features, the current process requires them to be shipped to Apple for final testing and calibration because of specialized security features. It's the specialized security features features. We would love for you to be able to get your phone fixed anywhere. We, we love the environment. We're not, you know, we're not just using the environment as an excuse to just pillage you and make more money and seem in virtue signal that we care. We care about the security, but the tool is 3D Touch. What does 3D Touch have to do with security? Absolute jack shit. The re security is one of those things that's always used. It's like, think of the children. We can't have them seeing Mortal Kombat. Who c you know, of course, let's not look at the parenting, the bad parenting that leads to violence among children. Let's blame Mortal Kombat. Let's not look at the fact that we don't want people fixing phones. Let's just use the word security. Security. And then everybody's just going to believe, oh. Oh, we, we can't have Lewis open phones. Michael Oberdick can't open phones. Jessa Jones can't open phones because then they'll hack your bank accounts and they'll get into all your information and they'll be able to drive your car off a cliff the same way the CIA probably does. Like, no, no, no. This is not about security. Stop. Cut the bullshit. There is no good reason to ship a phone off to Apple for a fucking screen repair. Secondly, when it comes to 3D Touch, there are 16-year-olds in mall kiosks that are replacing those screens with knockoffs, not even originals, with knockoffs on a regular basis, getting five-star after five-star after five-star review. So if Apple says you need this tool or you are literally not allowed in an Apple-authorized service center to fix an iPhone, if they're saying that you need this tool, what Apple is saying to me is that they have so low confidence in the quality or of their own parts that you need to run a 15-minute verification test. And if you can't do that, then you can't fix our fucking phones. Because our success rate with 3D Touch working is like 50-50. Half of the time it works, half of the time it don't. And this ain't like a BlackBerry Storm. I want to be clear here. Because when you're installing a BlackBerry Storm screen, like the 9530, <laughs> those, like if you don't tighten the screw just perfectly, there's no click. You tighten it, or if you tighten it too much, then it's a mess. The installer has a lot to do with the quality of the click, of the feeling of the screen, of the pushing on it when you're dealing with a BlackBerry Storm. That was 2008. This is 2017. You could have a, a 10 year old install that screen or fucking Tim Cook himself install the screen. That's not going to affect the 3D touch functionality at all. This is purely a function of the quality of the part. So what Apple must be saying, if they're saying that you need to have this tool in order to fix the phone, what they're kind of telling me is that they have so low confidence in the quality of their own parts that if you don't have this tool, you're not, you, you can't even fix iPhones because our parts suck. You need to filter through our parts to get through one that actually has working 3D touch because, hey, fuck if half the shit we make works. That, that, that's just the first thing that goes through my head. But the first thing that really gets me here is this whole thing with security. I'm sick and fucking tired of reading articles where they say, security, security, security. You don't need, you could take the home button off of the 6S that you were placing the screen on, 99% of the time is fine, and put it onto the new screen. There's no reprogramming. How many people here that fix iPhones actually have to replace the entire button because it's broken? How often does it happen that on an iPhone 6S that the button itself has been destroyed and doesn't work? 99% of the time, you transfer the button from the old one to the new one. And I'm confident that if you are, as you say, a world-class hardware repair provider, that being a world-class hardware repair provider, that you will be able to transfer the button from the old screen to the new one. 
Third thing to go over here. Uh, when people read the word third party, third party, they assumed that that means, hey, Lewis is getting schematics. Lewis would be able to buy ISL 6259s from the manufacturer instead of these fucktards in AliExpress. I'll be able to get screens for things instead of having to wire money to ransom people in Taipei that may or may not ship me what I ordered. No. Uh, this is an Apple service provider. When they say third party, they don't mean third party as an unauthorized. They mean third party as in their own authorized service providers. So do keep in mind in the article, it says calibration machine, two or three authorized service providers. And what makes this particularly funny is that if this article is telling the truth, what that would mean is that before this occurred, even an Apple authorized service provider would be not be allowed to replace the screen on your fucking phone. And that just, I, I, I don't, like, I, I just find that hard to believe. I mean, I, like, you're going to have authorized stores that are listed on your website. So if I go to apple.com and I click down that little drop-down menu to find an authorized service center for my iPhone, and I visit that authorized service center, they will not be allowed to replace the fucking screen. So all this does is it allows Apple's own authorized repair centers to repair their phones which is what they should have been doing since 2007. There is, this, is, this is not new. This is not news. This is not special. This is not they're selling parts and stuff to third parties. This is not they're allowing us to buy schematics. This is not they're allowing us to buy you know, all the stuff that we need to work on their products. This is not I can get a subscription for $6,000 a year, which, by the way, I'd happily pay for. This is not Lewis can get a subscription for $6,000 a year to buy schem to schematics and access to Apple service tests. This is Apple giving their own Apple certified the outlets, the ability to repair the front glass on their phones, which they should have been doing since 2007. There is no point in calling a facility an Apple-authorized service provider if that provider cannot offer you service. All this does is take an Apple-authorized, what I used to like to call them, I like to edit the acronym and call it an Apple-authorized sales provider, and it turns them into an Apple-authorized service provider. All this does is it makes the acronym that's existed for over 10 years accurate in this one case. And I've, I've looked around a little bit, and again, I'm, call me nuts, I'm still not impressed. You know, I go to this website, I look on iPhone, okay, how much does it cost to get my iPhone 6S screen repaired? I have no fucking idea. Uh, let's click on to pricing. How much does it cost to get my screen repaired? I'm hoping that it doesn't cost that, uh, that plus parts. Uh, plus cost of parts, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sincerely hoping that's not it. Uh, iPhone repairs, here we go, pricing. Uh, wait, no idea. And people can say what they want, my website kind of sucks. This is my sad little website. It doesn't have the infinite scrolly thing that's so popular nowadays. It just has this boring old setup. But one thing I like about my site, you know, as shitty as it may be, shitty as it may be, uh, it actually kind of tells you what we do. Uh, you have the contact form, and above all, you get an idea of pricing. May not be your exact quote, but here's the things that could be wrong with it. Here's what you're going to pay. Here's what you're going to pay. Here's, we have stuff in stock, here's where we're located, contact us, pricing, uh, you know, it, uh, let's see, if you, you have a keyboard issue, uh, pricing, you have a battery issue, pricing, it's like, I, you know, call me nuts, my website may suck, but I, I do try to give people some basic information that, for some reason, from the authorized world-class service center, you don't get even if you dig. So that being said, I am not impressed with this. this. All this does is it allows authorized service centers to provide service, which they should have been doing from the beginning. This is not impressive. This does not give me access to parts, schematics, diagrams. If I were to become an authorized service center, all this means that if I became an authorized service center and I begged them, if I just like bent over and like offered to give Tim Cook a hand job, all this means is that if I offered to give Tim Cook a hand job, I have a chance to be entered into a fucking raffle where I would be allowed to replace iPhone screens. Is this news? Sure ain't to me. So now we're going to go on to your comments, and then I'm going to get out of here and get myself a burrito because I'm kind of hungry. All right, so let's bring your comments window over to here onto my regular screen and get through this as quickly as we can and get out of here. Wow, there's a lot of comments.
Oh boy. Let's see. All right, we've got some useless comments. I have one, Lewis. I will trade you my I Touch ID machine for your Zamo. Yeah, one useless machine for another. That's a great idea. Articles like that make my skin crawl. The calibration machine takes about 15 minutes. That is normal. Again, 15. This is just so disconnected from the... Ex there is such a disconnect between the standard free market of iPhone and phones, iPhone screen repair and what customers' expectations are and how this works. It's just, no. You look like an angry tomato now. I will for a while. Okay, so these comments are mostly cancer. We will move on to the second chat and see if there's anything there. YouTube chat is worthless, and it's the Lexmark case. That's coming out later. Off topic, your apartment is badass. Thank you. I do like this place. Even if I move, I'm going to find a way to keep this apartment. Mobile fix was right, as always. All right, so that's about it. That is all I have to say on this issue. Not much to respond to. And as always, I hope you learned something.